So guys, welcome back to another video. In this one today, we're going to be talking about the Storyline 85 rated Oxlade Chamberlain item, which as you can see, I am about to unlock in FIFA 20 Ultimate Team. Um, Chamberlain is of course one of the rewards for completing Season 2. You have the option of this item, um, an 86 rated Gelson Martins and an 86 rated Danilo. Now, I won't lie, I'm a bit tempted to go for one of the other two, but um, I'm going to go with Chamberlain because I've run with a mostly Premier League side and he fits in the most easiest if that makes sense i think it does um anyway guys if you could leave like rating on this video that would be greatly appreciated in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts on this chamberlain item also let me know which item you are going to go for out of these three as we go ahead and redeem this chamberlain and now we have him in the club this is the team we're going to be using Chamberlain in. He's actually going to be replacing my Storyline Zaha, who I have had a lot of fun with. I really do like this card. So, as you can see, um, Zaha has a really good record for me. Ox has a lot to live up to. Now, we're going to be using this Ox card as a central cam, a wide cam, and as a centre mid. So, he's going to get tried out in a bunch of different roles over the next few games. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this Ox card does indeed get on. Um, really nice card, to be honest, fairly well-rounded, and uh, hopefully it does well in my team. Like I said, he's going to be tried out in like three different roles, so I'm not expecting him to score too many goals, especially when I use him as a centre mid, but hopefully he is involved in plenty of the attacking moves nonetheless. This item's got a four-star weak foot and four-star skills, as well as high, high work rates, so uh, everything looks good on the player bio page. Moving on in to the in-game attributes, there is plenty of dark green stats, and that's exactly what you want to see and um, so let's begin in the shooting section this ox card has an 86 attack position stat 87 shot power and 75 finishing fair enough 75 finishing isn't amazing but for a midfielder it's decent and this guy's got good shot power so he should be able to shoot relatively well across goal so if a chance does fall to this card i'm hoping he takes it the passing attributes, as you would expect, are pretty solid. He's got an 85 short passing rating and 83 crossing, and his long passing stat of 79 isn't too bad either. The dribbling department is full of dark green um, attributes, 83 agility, 92 balance, 88 ball control, and 88 in-game dribbling. On the ball, this guy should feel pretty fluid, um, so I'm expecting good things from him when he's in possession of the football. The defense, uh, defensive stats sorry, aren't too bad either. He's got a 76 interception rating, um, 71 defensive awareness, and 70 for stand tackling. Now, those stats aren't particularly amazing, so I probably wouldn't use him as a CDM, but um, his defensive stats are good enough for a centre mid role, in my opinion. Finally, over in the physical column, we can see this guy has an 83 rating for stamina, so that's okay. Okay, strength also of 74, and a pretty high aggression of 82. As a whole, the card actually looks really solid, and uh, the chem style we're actually going to apply to him is Sentinel. Now, some of you might be wondering why, and it's because it makes his card very well rounded and very complete, so he should be pretty good when he does play in that centre mid role. Anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get into some games and let's test this card out. For the Oxys debut, we come up against this. It's a pretty nice side, which has Neymar and team of the group stage, Talisa, in it. Nice win of the ball there by Chamberlain. Who gets the ball to Aubameyang. Not the best pass, but it's put him in an attacking position, and maybe he should have done better with a shot. Chance. Chamberlain and Aubameyang link up. Aubameyang's got a chance to score now, and he tucks it into the back of the net. Ah, oh, Nice tackle there by Chamberlain, and Suzuka collects the ball. Chamberlain returns the favour, and now we've got a chance. Suzuka, oh, the final pass there just wasn't good enough. Oh, a chance to come forward now. Chamberlain, can he find the right pass? He slides the ball to Theo Walcott, who returns the ball. Chance for Chamberlain inside the box now. Can he get the shot away? Yes, he can, and he's hit the post. But Walcott follows up and scores. And there is half-time. So we've got ourselves a 2-1 lead um, heading in to the second half. Not a bad first-half performance, to be honest, but uh, we do need to be a bit smarter in possession. In the second half, we're actually going to switch to the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow formation, and uh, we're going to slot Chamberlain in as a right centre mid, and we're going to see what he can do in that role. Samida so linking up very nicely with Chamberlain. He's now got a chance to get in this box. What can he do here? A bit of LB dribbling to try and get inside. Puts the ball inside for Aubameyang and the shot sadly is blocked by Longley. Suzuka switches play. Brings, Walt, um, brings Chamberlain into play. 
and Guardiola slides the ball through for him. Can he get on the end of this? Of course he can. He's going to get past Longley. He's going to chip the ball into the back stick. Can we get ahead to it? We cannot. Chamberlain gets around Tellez. And he does it with relative ease as well. Sprinting down this edge. Tellez is going to try and get back at him. Can we get the ball inside? He can. Oh, Kappa just at the last second clears it. Aubameyang slides the ball through. Chance for Chamberlain. Oh, he didn't score. Oh, he should have on the rebound. Oh, we should have had a goal there. And there's the full time whistle. We record ourselves a 3-2 victory. So how was the Ox on debut? He did alright to be honest. I thought he did quite well. Um, had a few chances which I feel he should have taken. But um, he was heavily involved in uh, two or three of our goals. Which was pleasing. So his goal involvement overall was good. But uh, I do feel like he could have scored one or two himself. Um, in the centre mid row, I thought he did alright. He didn't actually have too much defending to do. Because my opponent attacked down the other side a lot. But um, he was relatively solid in both the cam and the centre mid rolls In which he played in this game. Okay, so in our next game, this is what we are facing. That is just ridiculous. Like, I don't know what to say. Chamberlain trying to open up some space. Slides the ball in for Walcott, but unfortunately Carlos Alberto gets there just ahead of him. Aubameyang with a really nice bit of play. Puts the ball through for Walcott. Oh, Chamberlain was through, but he just got fouled by Carlos. Chamberlain with a nice left-footed pass over the top. Can Martial get on the end of it? He can. Now I've got a chance down this right edge. Can Martial get the ball inside? He can, and Aubameyang scored, but I think he's offside. Yep. Oh, that's a shame. Chamberlain puts the ball in for Aubameyang. Gets the shot away, and we do get a goal. Chamberlain with a nice pass into Aubameyang, who turned his man, and then he put the ball in at the near post. And there's the half-time whistle. Unfortunately, we conceded from kickoff, and I'm really annoyed about it because my opponent got a really lucky bounce. I'm um, pretty happy with my performance in the first half though. My opponent's team is just insane. Um, yeah, I feel like if I had that team, the scoreline would be much in my favour. But uh, that's just me being a bit sour. Uh, anyway, in the second half, you guys know the drill. 4-1, 2-1-2. Chamberlain in that right centre mid spot. Let's see how he does in that role. Walcott gets the ball to Chamberlain. How's the through ball from Chamberlain? It's not too bad, you know, but I don't think Walcott's going to quite get on the end of it because Maldini's holding him off really well. And there's the full-time whistle. Unfortunately, guys, as you can see, we've uh, we've lost this game at four goals to three. Um, I'm a bit disheartened, to be honest, because I thought I played really well up against an absolutely ridiculous opposition. And uh, I really do feel like if that guy didn't have Eusebio up front, who just scores everything, I probably would have won that game. But, um, yeah, I'm a bit salty about that one. But anyway, how was Chamberlain's performance in that match? And um, to be honest, he just got run ragged. Like, seriously, my opponent just passed the ball all over him. And uh, defensively, he really wasn't too great. Offensively, he was all right. But um, he definitely struggled in defense the way my opponent was passing with such elite players. Also, they were all much stronger than him. And it showed in game because they were knocking him off the ball with uh, relative ease. Anyway, let's move on in to another match. Okay, next we face this, a full Syria team which features Flashback Balotelli, Storyline, Politano, Handanovic in net and also an Infor Mertens at left wing. Oh, interesting. Now we might have a chance, thanks to a bit of a lucky bounce. Chamberlain inside the box, trying to open up space for a shot, but Koulibaly is there just to ward him off the ball. Martial, Chamberlain with a chance and he gets the goal eventually. Not great defending from my opponent there and we take full advantage. Oh, chance for Chamberlain. Oh, he just like ghosted into like a really good position there. Just left his defender for dead and then took the ball into the left side of the net. Really nice bit of off the ball movement from him there and a really tidy finish too. A goal out of pretty much nothing. Chamberlain puts a through ball for Aubameyang. And Aubameyang tries to return it and he does so, but oh, Chamberlain's still going. Still going, Chamberlain. Can he score? Oh, good save from the keeper. Aubameyang. Returns the favour to the Ox, who could put the ball past the keeper, but unfortunately, when he was shooting, he was under a lot of pressure, and that clearly affected his shot. Half-time comes round, and the lead is slim, but it is a lead nonetheless. We're going to switch to the 4-1-2-1-2, as we have in all the previous games for the second half, and there, uh, hopefully, uh, extend our lead. Here's Chamberlain. Pass out the back to Sizoko, who strikes and scores! Late assist for Chamberlain, and Sizoko is on the score sheet. And there's the full time whistle. We actually end up winning the game four goals, 2-2. Two, two. Very, very tight game, but uh, we got the job done. Defensively, we had to be good in that game because my opponent's attack was very, very good. 
Um, anyway, how was Chamberlain in this match? That is without doubt his best performance. Um, in the first half, as a cam, he scored twice. And in the second half, as a centre mid, he got uh, that match-winning assist. So, after all that, what's my verdict on this 85-rated Storyline Oxlade Chamberlain card? Um, I've got mixed feelings about this item, to be honest. In some games, it felt decent, but in others, it was just non-existent. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot to discuss right about now. So, let's get into things. Let's break things down. So, as you can expect, um, this guy's pace is definitely not a problem. This guy is very quick for a midfielder, and I had no issues with his pace going forward or when tracking back defensively. So, I was pretty happy with that. His shooting for a mid I thought was relatively decent, obviously he's not super clinical in front of goal but he's got good shot power and uh, he's decent for cross goal shots. Like I said he's not super reliable but um, he's a midfielder and not a striker so that's absolutely fine. Definitely wouldn't use this guy as a centre forward or a striker with that in mind. His attack positioning I thought was good, when going forward I thought this guy's general positioning was very good but when he was at centre mid his general positioning overall was pretty meh he was out of position a lot for me and i think that's due to his high high work rates his passing as a whole i thought was very good to be honest um he's definitely not an elite distributor of the ball but he's a decent one to be fair he passed the ball pretty well for me put through some good through balls and his shot pass and link up play was good also and his crossing um wasn't terrible either so um pretty happy with his passing as a whole and with him having a four star weak foot he can pass and um, pretty well off of his weak foot too which is a bonus his dribbling was good, but it definitely wasn't amazing. This guy's got pretty good ball control and um, really good balance, but um, his agility isn't the best, and you can actually feel that in-game. I did expect this guy to feel better on the ball than he did, but um, unfortunately, he didn't feel that great. Now, don't mishear me. I'm not saying this guy's dribbling is bad, but uh, he certainly didn't feel as agile. He wasn't as easy to manoeuvre in-game as I expected he would be after seeing his uh, dribbling attributes. Uh, defensively, how was this guy? Well, did you notice there wasn't too many defensive clips in um, in the gameplay? That's because this guy didn't do too much defending. Now, he did make uh, a couple of interceptions, which was good, but uh, his actual tackling in-game really isn't that great. Um, and, yeah, like when going for a tackle, he can just be like brushed aside, especially by the higher tier players. Also, like I already said, positionally, um, when defending, this guy isn't that great and uh, can leave holes. So, uh yeah, defensively, really not too pleased with this item, and uh, I definitely wouldn't use him as a CDM. Uh, and that brings us on now, finally, to the physical department, which, um, once again, there isn't really too much to talk about here. Um, he's got decent strength for a mid, and he can battle to an okay degree, but um, like I just said, against the top tier players who've got decent strength, they're just going to knock him off the ball rather easily. Chamberlain does have good aggression, but um, yeah, like I say, he can be pushed around a little bit. His stamina held up for me. Um, he's got 83 stamina, and he does run a lot due to his work rates, but um, his stamina seemingly held up for me, especially for 90 minutes, but if uh, one was to go into extra time, probably would look to sub him off. Aerially, he's really not much of a player to aim for, so uh, don't advise crossing to this guy because he's five foot nine, and although he's got okay jumping, he isn't going to win many aerial battles. Overall, then, what's the verdict on this card? I think it's an all right centre mid, but um, I just really don't feel like it performed like an 85 rated centre mid in game. Um, he was okay in the cam role and all right in centre mid, but um, yeah, he just didn't really excel in either role, and there are definitely better players in both lane positions in FIFA 20. So guys, those are my thoughts on the 85 rated Storyland Chamberlain. It's a good card, but it's it's not a great one, I don't think. But uh, nonetheless, not a bad item for a freebie. I probably will end up using it again just because I've got better players in my club. But um, for those of you who run with a cheapish Premier League team, this card probably could do a decent job for you. But um, if you've got a pretty solid team right now, I doubt this guy gets anywhere near your squads. Um, anyway, you've heard my verdict on this card. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, drop a like on it. Comment below your thoughts. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.